What's nice about BFA, the experience at BFA, is having access to all the interdepartmental components. Uh, we're always communicating with each other and we're always putting the student first. And I think the benefit of participating in, in any kind of an activity, whether it's band after school or chorus or drama or athletics, is that you find people that share the same common interests that you do. And it's fun doing that. You can get a lot accomplished when you have a lot of people on the same page. We are so excited to have you here and welcome to BFA. Well, good evening and welcome to all current and future parents, guardians, and hopefully there's some students joining us tonight. I am Brett Blanchard, the very proud principal of BFA. And before we get started, I just wanted to say a few words of why I take such pride in the building and why I believe it is the place for the freshmen to enter into. Our job is to actualize student potential, and I believe we have all the elements to meet that at the highest needs. We have not only probably the widest array of course offerings in Vermont, certainly as wide array as any school, but we have a vibrant extracurricular program that includes clubs of all dimensions, and we are committed to a strong student voice. So I think what you'll find in here a little bit tonight, what your student will find when he or she enters our building is that not only do we have a supportive and caring environment, we have an especially creative and student-centered team, and they'll be able to choose from a wide array of these courses while being supported every day in our building. It's also worth noting that we're one of the few schools that has a very close connection with the Career Technical Center. In fact, we are all in one building. So that opens up a whole nother opportunity for freshmen as they enter into our facility. And really our close working relationship just benefits students across the board. And finally, as you'll hear from our ninth grade team, you know, their devotion and their real student-centered approach to education is what's gonna make a difference for the students entering our building. And you'll also find the administration certainly wants to hear from you. And after this, should there be a need or should there be a desire to speak to me personally, please send me an email and I'll make sure we set up a time so we can connect as personally as we're able in this different educational environment. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce our amazing guidance director, Elaine Archambault. the team here at BFA this fall. We have a wonderful team of counselors and we're going to go around and introduce everyone and explain a little bit about BFA. We will be answering questions that are posed in the YouTube live. So please enter your questions in the chat there. Um, I oversee the curriculum and the instruction. So what I want to um, bring your attention to is the fact that on the website, if you go to maplerun.org and you go to BFA, you'll be able to find some resources that may answer a lot of your questions. We have the parent student handbook available. We also have, uh, which includes the BFA school-wide scoring guide and the way that we translate grades. And also we have uh, the program of studies uh, for next year has also been published on the website so you can see all of the course offerings that we have. This is my second year at BFA and one thing that really stands out to me about BFA is the very close community that we have here. I was welcomed in with open arms and immediately started to work collaboratively with my colleagues. The students here are very close, we're a tight community and there's a lot of vibrancy here so that's why I love BFA. Hello and thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Stephanie Hodgman. I'm one of the four school counselors 
I tend to have the letters of the alphabet at the beginning of the alphabet. I hope to meet you and your students. I am also the Interact Club Advisor. Interact is a community service organization at this school and within other schools in this country and internationally. There are about 40,000 chapters internationally. We have a student this next year that will be going to an Interact conference in Calgary from BFA. If you're thinking about getting involved in a club or a sport here, I'd like you to consider Interact. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Dan Marlowe, and I'm proud to be the athletic director here at BFA. Um, we're excited to be here to answer your questions tonight, and even more excited to have your sons or daughters come here and be a part of our family. Uh, we're very proud of uh, our kids here at BFA and the effort that everybody puts into making this the best place for you to uh, attend school. So we'll look forward to answering your questions. Hi everyone, my name is Chris Pepin. I'm a school counselor. This is my eighth year at BFA. Um, one of my favorite parts of my job is actually getting to know my students. And a wonderful part of that is that we will have our students as counselors for four years. So we'll kind of go through high, your high school with you. Um, the other piece is I, I just love being a part of this community. It's, a, it's an amazing community. We all work together. We all rally when, when we're struggling. Um, and we're just really excited to have you. Hello, my name is Amy Turner, and I'm one of the other guidance counselors here. This is my 18th year, so I've been here for a while and seen lots of things change and have always felt very comfortable here and very proud of our students and our faculty and staff. Um, I am very much looking forward to having you come to BFA and getting to know you and working with you for the four years that you'll be here and helping you to determine what your goals are. We do not set your goals for you. We really like to get to know you and help you to set those goals and achieve them. Um, part of my role is to provide mental health and substance use supports to our students. I'm also the Gender and Sexuality Alliance Advisor, um, so we certainly have a lot to offer um, both uh, in school and during school and after school, so welcome. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Liam Mahavir and I'm the Flexible Pathways Coordinator at BFA. Um, you know, we at BFA, we recognize that the purpose of the students' experience here is uh, ultimately to prepare them for what they do after BFA. And uh, my role is to help assist each student with their individual needs around their post-secondary goals. Um, this can include internships, independent studies, career development opportunities, um, getting out in the community to learn in a hands-on manner. And um, yeah, the flexible pathways options at BFA can afford your student the opportunity to earn credit through um, in a non-traditional setting, you know, so getting credit outside of the traditional classroom. And uh, I'm also the assistant coach of the Alpine ski team. So we have that for you too. Good evening, my name is Leanne Wright. I am the director of the Northwest Career and Technical Center. As Mr. Blanchard noted in the beginning, uh, we, are, um, we are school within a school, uh, so you'll have the opportunity to participate in classes as a freshman at our technical center. Uh, we have over 10 classes that you can uh, explore in hopes to potentially attend as either sophomores, juniors, or seniors, which probably seems so far away for you. Um, we have a great team of administrators and faculty and staff that work seamlessly together, and I think you're gonna enjoy what you're going to hear tonight. And welcome. So we're going to go to Desiree, who is watching our questions, and she's going to pose the questions, and we are going to answer them for you. What 
great question. Uh, a number of sports, actually. We have 29 different programs, 47 different teams. We're one of the few state, few schools in the state that still offer freshman-only teams uh, in soccer, uh, basketball, and baseball at this point. Um, and so there's a number of activities depending upon which season. Uh, you certainly have in the fall, you have uh, soccer and football, uh, volleyball, both boys and girls, uh, cheerleading, cross-country running for boys and girls, uh, boys and girls soccer. And in the winter, we have uh, hockey for both boys and girls, basketball for both boys and girls, uh, cheerleading, dance, Nordic, Alpine, and snowboard teams. And in the springtime, uh, we have baseball and softball, uh, lacrosse for both boys and girls, track and field for boys and girls, uh, tennis. Uh, I think I left out golf in the, in the fall. It used to be a spring sport, but golf in the fall now, tennis in the, in the springtime. So number of offerings, plenty of opportunities. And I would really encourage anybody, whether it's in athletics or any other venture, we have probably the outstanding chorus and band and drama in the state. And if uh, I would encourage anybody that's planning on coming to any school, but particularly to BFA, is to get involved sooner than later. Uh, the beauty of, of doing one of the extracurricular activities in the fall is that we tend to start on a normal year, we tend to start in the middle of August. So it allows you to meet a group of people that you haven't met before. For a number of our freshmen, they've been competing against these kids at, from the various schools at their junior high level. So it gives them an opportunity for the first time to be together um, and work together to attain their success. So a lot of, a lot of opportunities, a lot of uh, uh, opportunities for them to find something they haven't done in the past or to continue those activities that they have done. And I'd encourage everybody to certainly take advantage of that and be a part of something in the school uh, so that you can make those connections right away. the arts, um, including um, some AP art classes as well. That's a great question. We would love to host in-person tours. At this point, we can't, but we are looking to the future and hoping that in May or June, that we might be able to invite people in, or at least over the summer. So stay tuned, and we will definitely get that communication out as soon as we can offer those. Are there additional support systems for incoming freshmen to transition to high school? On a student chat, we learned about some sort of ninth grade team. Could someone speak more on this? Team. And what that means is uh, for your ninth grade year, you will have um, a group that you're kind of traveling to a range of classes with, and those teachers work together to make sure that you're being supported um, in the way that you need to be to make sure that your transition um, into high school is a smooth one. And so on those ninth grade teams, um, you might find yourself doing some different team building activities uh, to make sure that you have a cohort of people that you know and trust and are there to really support you through that transition year. Yes, I can. Um, again, I want to um, direct you to the website because this will also um, answer some of your questions about program offerings. 
um, someone had asked about fine arts, and if you go into the program of studies, which is listed under the student and parent area, uh, when you go to the menu on the BFA website, you will find uh, the program of studies, and in that program of studies, it will list each of the areas. And so, again, for fine arts, um, we have everything from acting to dance class um, and the, the fine arts and music. Um, so if you have specific questions about what types of classes are offered, I would go to the program of studies. Also on the website where you'll find the student and parent handbook, you'll find information about um, the proficiency-based grading. For BFA, um, we have a school-wide scoring scale um, that goes from zero to four, and we do have halves. So we go um, zero uh, is not accessible, not enough information. One is emerging, two is developing a skill or concept. Um, and then at 2.5, we find basic proficiency, which is um, a passing grade for credit. We then go up to three, which is proficient. 3.5 is proficient plus, and then four is expanding proficiency. Um, our school moved last year from um, on our transcripts, translating those um, proficiency grades into letter grades. So when you get your uh, transcript uh, to be sent out to colleges, you will see an equivalence of that proficiency grade to a letter grade. Um, and that's something that we had gone back to last year um, during uh, some community conversations that we had. So. Um, if you go into the parent-student handbook, each of those proficiency levels are explained uh, so that you can really see it more in detail. You're able to make an appointment with us through the office itself in person. You would get a pass from your current teacher to come on down to guidance and schedule an appointment with us. You could also email us. We also uh, take, uh, we have a you can book me or I have a you can book me feature on the bottom of my signature line. Uh, if it's an emergency, you can speak with your teacher and we could see you uh, within a, a very rapid time frame. So we try to offer many ways for us uh, to be able to communicate with you. We're also, we try to be visible in the building and sometimes it's just talking to us in the hall saying, hey, I'd like to see you later. And we would go back to our office and schedule an appointment with you. I would encourage you to meet with us, make appointments with us, see us at least once a semester so that we can help you with your coursework, we can help you with social stuff, we can help you with getting involved within the school or the community, the college and career planning. We want to be there for you and the best way to do that is to get to know you. simplest way of explaining it is get, get the opportunity for students to get credit for opportunities <clears throat> outside of a traditional classroom so that can it can look a lot of different ways and that's largely defined by the students interests and previous experiences and um, goals that they have for what they want to do after high school um, there are some shorter term experiences around job shadows which we offer which would be just a field trip to a particular to kind of ask questions and uh, observe somebody in a particular profession that a student's interested in um, and then there are sort of semester long opportunities where a student is doing a traditional internship for periods five and seven of their senior year i have several students i'm working with doing that and they um, I have a student inter you know, doing an internship on a farm, a student doing an internship with a HVAC technician. Um, I've had students do internships with um, physical therapists. The list you know, kind of goes on. Um, and the way that that's kind of assessed is through Google Classroom, they're documenting the hours that they spend, the things that they do, sending evidence of the work that they're completing, and 
you know, back to me, as well as meeting with me for kind of um, intermittent evaluations, conversations with their mentor, um, things like that. So, so that's a traditional internship that a student might be part of. And then there's also independent projects that students have gotten involved with where they're, they're doing something on campus. So that could be like working with a teacher kind of in a like a student teaching sort of context. There's a couple of students working with the drama teacher right now as basically student teachers for a lower level drama class as though they're ex as being experienced students. And, um, or a more community-based project. Um, one thing we're working on right now is with some entrepreneurially entrepreneurial students. They're actually working on putting together a business plan for a BFA, Northwest uh, Career and Technical Center community vending machine, where they're gonna put together this business, try to turn a profit, and those proceeds will go to a rotating set of programs within the school. So it's, uh, in a nutshell, it's, all, it's a lot of student-driven stuff, and the, uh, you know, it's based on the student's creativity, and we try to accommodate those, you know, those desires. So that assignment will take place um, in early summer. And when your schedules are sent home, you will have the counselor's name on the schedule. The counselors will be available in August on select days that we will publish for you to assist with schedule changes and talk about the courses that you're engaging in and your interests at that time. In taking classes at NCTC, and what are the programs? Ninth grade students can take classes that are called specialty modules, and you can sign up with your uh, guidance counselor to do that. Um, we have met with a lot of you already uh, with the BFA guidance counselors and uh, with Mr. Marlowe and with Mr. Mahabir um, to describe our school and the courses that we have. So all of the Northwest career and technical classes for freshmen will be listed on, on that form as well. Um, we have over 10 classes that you can uh, sign up as a freshman and um, they are semester classes. So as a freshman, you would have the opportunity to take two of those classes if your schedule uh, was able to fit it. And then after your freshman year, if you found a program that you liked, you could potentially apply for uh, one of our 10 programs. Uh, so for example, if you are really into food and cooking, you might want to take our Baker's Apprentice class as a ninth grader. And then if you loved it, you might want to consider applying to our culinary program as a sophomore, where that would take up two periods of your class, um, and you would be doing uh, lots of baking and cooking and also service within the culinary industry. So a typical schedule, every student at BFA, and starting again this fall, have seven courses, unless there is a need for a block with a little bit of support. So they'd have six classes plus a support time. Most have seven classes, and there are three days a week that you see every class and every teacher for 50 minutes, and then there are two days a week that you have the first half one day a week, and the other half of your classes the other day. And those are longer, about 85 minutes. The typical course load for a freshman is that you have an English class, a social studies, a science, and a math, and then PE and health. That leaves two sections for courses that you are really interested in taking. And I also want to add that if you are currently a student or a parent in the Maple Run District, that's uh, Fairfield, St. Albans City, or town. The registration packets have gone to, or go are going tomorrow, to the school counselors, and then those will come home with your student. If you are from a surrounding town, one of the choice towns, like Georgia, or Alberg, or Bakersfield, Berkshire, um, then those are being mailed to your home. And 
the school counselor also will have some in addition. could be in addition to the athletics that Mr. Marlowe mentioned, clubs and um, volunteer work as well. So Mrs. Hodgman is running a program called Interact, Club Interact, and they do a lot of community service and community building projects. Um, students also are involved in clubs like photography, um, the gaming club that students work on together and decide which kinds of games they'd like to play together after school. The, I'm thinking, I'm trying to think of, there are so many different clubs that students can get involved in. And actually one important factor is that if you have an interest in a club and we don't currently have a club organized for you, you can actually just get a few of your friends together if you all share an interest, and we can help you with finding an advisor for the club, and you can set that up. You can actually be in charge of starting a brand new club. Um, one of the other groups that meets after school is the GSA, the Gender and Sexuality Alliance, and students have had cooking clubs and art clubs, um, different variations of band and chorus. So lots of different areas, pretty much anything, any topic you can think of. Online, you can see a more comprehensive list of activities um, that your student can be involved in. Well, with the situation that we're in right now with COVID and um, some of the time that's been, um, that you know, students have had a hard time uh, this year, we wanna make sure that we're providing supports for students this summer. So we're currently working on a menu of um, classes or activities that may be offered in the summer for our students and especially our incoming ninth graders. So we'll keep you posted on that. So we have um, Latin, Spanish, and French that's offered at BFA. Um, and sort of pre-COVID, when COVID's not there, there is typically a trip to one of the different countries every single year. So it's really exciting. There's also a um, there's a club that the, that the language uh, group has. And so that's a, just another club uh, to add to the bigger menu. Um, I just wanted to add as well um, that any of these questions you guys, you know, parents may have or students may have, um, you're always welcome to contact us directly um, and we can answer these outside of this meeting. So I don't want you to, when you leave here, if you have any questions or things that you wish you would have asked, don't hesitate to call or connect with us. Sure, I can talk about the connector uh, between the two buildings. Um, besides just being a, um, a factor of keeping everybody out of the elements, it is an extremely valuable safety factor because at any time during the day, we had uh, probably six to 700 kids when we were here full time uh, passing between the buildings at any given time. So um, it ended up being a tremendous uh, physical presence in addition to the school uh, that connects both BFA North and South, where now you don't have to go outside at all. And when you first arrive into school in the building, you actually enter the building through the connector at the middle, uh, what used to be the parking lot, the lower parking lot and the upper parking lot. And um, so that you can access either the North or South building. Uh, spacious and bright and uh, new, which has given a huge uh, uplift to the students because it's, a, it's bright, so it's a, a very pleasant way to connect from one building to the other. Um, and as a reflection of uh, 
how much this community cares about our kids and, and our uh, facility, uh, because I think it's a tremendous addition. We have a, a many, many, many business classes. So anything from uh, business management to business entrepreneurship, um, there is uh, uh, um, personal finance, personal finance uh, business law, accounting, A and B. So um, marketing. So there's just we have a huge business department with a, a lot of options. of them. Uh, there are several in the science department. There's AP Bio and AP Physics and AP Environmental. There are some AP um, Social Studies classes, AP Government and um, AP U.S. History. Uh, and then there's AP Literature and AP Language. So nearly every core department, every core department has AP classes. And if you are interested, as we said before, in the arts, you can rise to the level of taking AP art as well, and even in the languages in addition. So there, there are multiple opportunities. We also um, have not spoken yet about the ability to take uh, virtual classes. So there are some students who, in addition to their regular course load, would might be interested in taking a different type of language or a different type of course that's not necessarily offered here and you could do that through vhs and we have a coordinator to do that there's also dual enrollment courses every vermont high school student receives two free college classes and you can take those at ccv or uvm or castleton you know any of these locations in the state It's really tricky right now with the COVID restrictions. We're doing everything we can to make sure the school and the classrooms, the students and the teachers are safe. Right now, it's, it's very uh, difficult to make changes. We hope that kids get their elective choices. That doesn't always happen because we offer so many classes. If they want to make a schedule change, they would reach out to their school counselor. Their, their schedule is actually built by PowerSchool. So when a family gets that copy in the summer that wasn't hand built by a counselor, the system built it to maximize opportunities for courses for the students. The first step would be to contact the counselor. We can either make the change or not depending on space. If there isn't space in that course, we would look to other openings. And we generally, we generally allow schedule changes up until the first week of school. Oftentimes there are spaces that are, are made available as kids add and drop classes, as kids move in and out. And if there isn't an option that works, sometimes we're able to do things within the building as office workers or teacher support, there are flexible pathway options, there are online options. We're trying to be as creative as possible for the students. I wanted to add that it's important that you put your first and second choice down, and I think there might even be a third choice, and really take the time to read the course descriptions to ensure that you understand the courses that you might be scheduled in, and that will really decrease your um, decrease you having to go to your counselor to make changes. So read the courses before you put your first, second, and third choices down, and, and then you know what you're getting into. And I'll also add that, you know, Ms. Archambault outlined a freshman, a typical freshman schedule, but as you progress, required courses get taken care of, and you, by the time you're in your junior and senior year, you gain more choice, and there are more electives available to you, and you have more room in your schedule to kind of make it what you want it to be. So that's something to know that as you move up in grades, you get more flexibility 
and options with your schedule, whether it's tech center, electives, flexible pathways, all those things. I think the uh, other thing that I would add is um, that is the importance of us being able to meet with you as students. Um, over four years, we really wanna help you guide your choices dependent upon your interest. So it might be us meeting together and you say, well, I really wanna take AP Calculus my senior year. So we can talk together and look at what that track is going to look like. And so really planning with us um, throughout your time in high school so you can, by the end, you really are reaching the goals that you want academically. So we've got a great physical education program with a vibrant staff uh, who changed the focus of phys ed from the, from the old days of uh, just doing a lot of team type sports and, and activities to more lifelong activities. You know, we're fortunate because we've got uh, the great facility here at the high school in the gymnasium and the weight room. Uh, and then you couple that with the opportunities at the Collins Pearly Sports Center which is 55 acres with both indoor and outdoor facilities that are at the student's um, disposal, uh, including strength and conditioning, um, broom ball, uh, uh, volleyball, indoors and outdoors. Uh, we did um, frisbee, both ultimate frisbee and frisbee golf outside, archery outside. Uh, and along with some basic softball and uh, uh, game activities. They actually just finished in the, late in the fall an orienteering class where they take compasses or GPSs uh, to search and identify where certain things are on the property. So uh, the days of uh, the old phys ed classes uh, being a drudgery has really changed considerably. There's a lot of energy in the class and and they're excited to uh, um, to work with the kids and have an opportunity to create some experiences that are going to help them that they can carry with them when they graduate from high school. So this might be my last question. I hope I get more in the chat. But what makes CFA better than other high schools? Well, I think I can uh, jump in on that. Um, I think the culture. Uh, is what separates BFA from, from many other schools and um, many other places. You know, culture has been described as uh, the water in an aquarium, um, that uh, you don't pay any attention to it. You look at the fish and the, and the plants and everything else, but without the water, nothing is going to live. And so the culture at BFA is, is one that re, is a reflection of the community. Um, it's caring and supportive uh, I think in this community, if somebody needs something, there you'll find somebody that will help out and reach out to help them. And um, I think you have that same energy in our students. Um, they're not afraid to work. Um, they work hard, but they're very, very proud of who they are and what they're trying to do and willing to give back, to come back and give back. And I think um, that's a great energy. You know, people say if you want to be successful, um, you have to love what you do. And I think that's uh, a true reflection of the people, <clears throat> the people that come here, both our staff and our students. Uh, it's a great place to work and a great place for kids to come to school and interact with each other and support each other. rise above the rest is our collaboration with the Technical Center. Um, there's very few places um, that you could go where if you want to see, you know, uh, if you want to take a class that aligns with your interest in building trades or you want to, you know, try something out in uh, culinary or, you know, you decide that you really want a, a, a practical application in your math and you can take geometry and construction class and you're only walking down the hall to get there. You don't have to get a bus to get to the tech center. And so that's really unique here at BFA that you can really um, kind of explore different options uh, with our neighbor, the tech center, really easily um, so that you can open up all your opportunities. Well, 
this year is a little different because of the hybrid um, situation. But my understanding is that most student to teacher ratios are between one to 15 and one to 25, depending on the course. I also wanted to just add a little bit to the last question. So I live in Georgia and that's a choice town. It's the reason why we moved there 22 years ago. We raised our children there. And both of our daughters had an opportunity to go to many different schools and check them out. They both, for different reasons, chose BFA. And the resounding reason for both of them underlying was that there were lots of different opportunities presented here that weren't necessarily presented at other schools for them. And they wanted the various levels of challenge, but they also wanted to be able to be involved. So that's why we chose BFA. We have a time during the day that you will eventually see in your schedules called enrichment. That may be the same name you have right now in your middle schools. And the enrichment is very similar to a, a guided study or a study hall. It's an opportunity for you to work with your current teacher or any other teacher in the building during that time. So let's say you need to redo a test with your physics teacher or you want extra help with your chemistry teacher so you would sign into that room or your algebra teacher. Right now, during this current schedule, we have an enrichment every day that we're in person. I expect that in the fall we will have at least, I'm trying to remember old schedule, at least four enrichments a week. So you will have that time built in your day in addition to those communications that you'll have with your teacher. I need extra help on this. And teachers at BFA are more than willing just to stay after school with you to meet you before school or to meet you during that enrichment time. I will give my Dr. Seuss example. <laughs> so I think about a machine. We will call it a course scheduling machine. So you all will put your requests in the machine. You'll put your requests for your languages, for your specific core classes, for your math classes, for your elective classes. All of those courses go into the machine. And at one point, someone pulls a lever and a level, lever rather, and a schedule is built. We'll try to, the, the system will try to maximize students' choices in developing this master schedule. But the information has to go in first. So if folks aren't choosing the classes, those classes may not run. That's why it's so important your choices at the front end of this process because if students don't choose those classes, those courses will, will, will not run. So the courses go into the machine. At one point, every student's choices go in and administration and power school build the master schedule. So on a normal year, unlike this year, uh, fall sports normally begin the middle of August, like anywhere from the 10th to the 14th or 16th. Um, so actually, as I alluded to earlier, the benefit of becoming involved or trying something different that maybe you haven't tried before is that you get an opportunity to meet a whole group of kids uh, all doing something that they enjoy doing before you even enter the building, which gives you an inside uh, edge or a foot in the door uh, to make connections with people. Because the connections that you make when you're trying out for something uh, early, in the, early in the fall uh, hopefully relaxes some of the anxieties that you have about coming and knowing where the classes are because you're going to have a whole number of connections with people that can help you if you get uh, caught during the course of a day. It seems like a big... Um, 
daunting task when you first walk in and there's two buildings and then the complex is a third building and that's a mile away. But honestly, after you've been here one day, um, it's like you've been here forever. And, and because there's somebody, goes back to our culture, somebody's going to be there to help you uh, to find your way the first time and make it easy for you. Um, and so then what seemed to be a, a challenging uh, task for you coming from a smaller school and then coming into a larger school is actually uh, those worries are relaxed once you get here. start of the school day is at 7.30, typically, and it ends at about 2.45. After that, there are after-school activities, clubs, athletics, and things of that nature. Everyone has a lunch built into this year to advisory. On a typical year, is it also built into advisory? No, it's a different time. Can someone speak to when that occurs? On a typical year, your lunch is built into one of your one of your classes. So let's say that's period five. Let's say that my fifth period is Spanish. At one point, my Spanish class will go to lunch together. Sometimes that's at the end of class. Sometimes that's at the beginning of class. And sometimes it's actually right in the middle of class. And so you, you would break you would go to lunch, and you would resume your class. Can you talk about what it's been like for this fall school rollout? And now is it hybrid, or back to maybe full time? As far as what the fall is going to be, we are planning for two different scenarios. Um, it's still hard to see what it, where exactly we're going to be in terms of um, COVID by that point. So we're planning on moving ahead with a normal year schedule while at the same time having our plans reserved uh, to go back into a hybrid if necessary, uh, to, you know, dependent on the COVID numbers and what the Department of Education and what the governor is directing us to do. So we are planning for both worlds. So at this point, I don't believe that we have any more questions in the chat. We have about 10 more minutes. Would anyone like to add anything um, for the community that's listening at this time? about the mental health supports um, and groups that we have here yet at BFA. Um, so, of course, high school is not easy for anybody, and it's important to know um, that students have an outlet to receive support. Um, not only are there are other guidance counselors um, a great source for that, um, but when a higher level of intervention is needed, um, then that's my role to step in. We also partner very closely with um, NCSS, which is our local mental health agency. And we have a school-based clinician with us um, full-time. Her name's Marissa McFadden. She's lovely. Um, and so when there's an even higher level of need or therapeutic intervention um, that's required for that student, uh, we have that available as well. Um, we also have a group called Well-Minded. We talk about stress and anxiety and the coping skills um, around that. So there are definitely a lot of different opportunities um, for, for support. And I see Desiree has another question for one of us. So it's not a real machine. <laughs> But, but sometimes when I'm in the classroom, it's the easiest way for me to relay to students how important it is at the front end of that process to put the courses in that you want. It's very important that that happens then. That happens in, it just depends. Usually in a normal year, that would happen in February. This year, that timeline will be a little different. So 
students will be receiving in the mail and through their schools course selection sheets, which will be returned to their school teachers, I believe, in mid-March. So for, freshmen, for freshmen, it's a little, it's a little different. Yep. So the registration packets are going to reach you very soon, either coming from your student coming home or in the direct mail. And on that registration sheet, you, you want to do what Stephanie's saying. Just be really clear about the elective courses that your student is passionate about and listing those. So that information is due back as, fresh, as rising freshmen, current eighth graders, to your school counselors by February 15th. Yes, please, Desiree. I'm going to turn to the parents for Band 2013. Um, it is an incredible organization. On a normal year, we meet once a month in the evening for an hour to plan band activities, band trips. Um, it's so much fun. So I'm just going to call. The BFA boosters uh, in a normal year um, uh, would welcome any new uh, helpers or anybody willing to volunteer at any of our events. Um, they cover not only, they're not only supportive of athletic events, but they're supportive of all the school events. So uh, irregardless of what your interest may be, they would be more than happy to uh, receive any volunteer help. It really has fallen on the shoulders of a very small group of people uh, over the years. And um, and there's no need for that. They would welcome that. So I would encourage people um, to do that. I would add from the Northwest career and technical side of things, we're always looking for parents to volunteer to share their passion around what they do for a career. So I know Mr. Mahabir would also be interested in um, connecting um, his students with people that um, are able to offer job shadows or if you work at the hospital or if you work at a, a manufacturing business locally where you could host students so they could see what it's like to do that type of work. Um, and then either make arrangements to um, go right to work after high school or to make a plan to go to college and then come back to our area um, to support um, the workforce here. Who would parents reach out to to get involved in these volunteer opportunities? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Who would parents reach out to? Oh, who do they reach out to? Uh, well, the, in terms of the boosters, um, the uh, person would be Ellen Gessel, Ellen or Mr. Gessel. Uh, they've been running the boosters for 20 plus years, 25 years probably. Uh, so that would be your, your best contact, or they can, you can contact me and I can forward your information, your contact information to them. Certainly the band group, uh, I would assume uh, Mr. Bushy would be the best contact. Uh, to make, and uh, certainly uh, Mrs. Wright in the Tech Center, or Mr. Mahabir uh, for Pathways. I think, honestly, if you reach out to any contact that you may have at BFA, uh, they will direct you uh, to the right in the right direction, or get you in that direction, so that uh, you can find out. There's few people anywhere today that won't take on anybody's assistance. Yeah, Mr. Marlowe's right. We'll send you in the right direction. But also on the website, there is a staff page on BFA. So if you're, if you know you want to, you know, you're interested in who's the, who's the Spanish teacher, I want to talk to them. You know, you can find out through the staff page on the BFA website. So there are not any more questions at this time. I see that we have about five minutes left. Would anyone like to speak about anything else at this point? that we'd like families to know. I would just add that um, if you have a son or daughter that's interested in participating in an athletic team when you arrive, please take care of the physical requirement. Um, we require that they have proof of physical on file um, here at school uh, before they can participate. And one of the things that sometimes um, 
delays that process is people not waiting until the preseason begins, the middle of August, and then all of a sudden, imagine the poor doctor's offices in Franklin County when every school in Franklin County starts at the same time and they're inundated with requests for physicals. So I would encourage people to uh, make that request as soon as possible. And once you have that copy, you can forward it uh, to my office uh, for the athletic piece. Um, the number is 802-527-6455. And that's also on the web page, as uh, Liam mentioned shortly. Um, and, t and take a look or make those phone calls again and, and try to find out. But it's, it's well advertised everywhere. It's on our athletic web page. Uh, and I think that would be helpful in the transition period again. Starting early, get your information in early. And I would encourage you to do that as soon as possible. That's a great question. This year, they added an extension on, on that. It's always been the physical is good within two years of your participation. So you have to be able to start and complete your season showing that you've had a physical within two years. This year, because of the COVID restrictions, um, the state has given a, an additional year uh, on to all the physical forms to allow, because it's so difficult to get in to actually have a physical with the COVID restrictions. So this year we had that additional year. But normally, which is where we hope to be next year at this time, um, normally it's a two-year, within a two-year window of your participation. And I would, I would encourage people that, regardless of what you haven't been able to do this year because of all the restrictions, don't let that stop you from trying something when you come here next year. Um, and hopefully we'll be all in a better place and we'll be able to do uh, a good job of helping you get there. And reach out, like Mr. Pepin said earlier, reach out to us, reach out to anybody. You can contact the main office, guidance office. Uh, any, anybody there will kind of redirect your question to the appropriate response. but. If you've been watching this tonight and you're sitting there and afterwards say, God, I wish I would have asked that question when I had the chance, you always have a chance. So just uh, make the effort to contact somebody and we'll do the best job that we can to help you. Um, I just want to end with saying that um, the teachers and the staff here at DSA work for our students. Um, we have an amazing team of teachers. They're highly qualified. They're passionate about um, young people and about making sure that those young people are equipped for their next steps in life, um, that they usher them through you know, high school, making sure that um, they're, they're learning all the things that they need in order to be successful. And um, you know, proficiency-based learning has been um, in the state of Vermont for a number of years now. And um, through the years, we're continuing to get professional development and getting better and better at making sure that those gaps that students may have encountered throughout their education have been closed. And um, I'm just really proud to say that uh, the BFA community and the teachers work really hard to make sure that um, our kids are prepared for next steps in life. So we would welcome you to BFA with open arms and make sure that uh, your students are cared for and equipped. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. This is uh, an opportunity that we wanted to take to be able to speak to you about what is available here for your students at BFA. And this has been recorded, so you can also have uh, your friends uh, watch it in addition. There are probably lots of people who weren't able to tune in, so they can check this out at any time. Thank you so much. Have a great night.